Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are going to solve the stone wall exercise of Codility lesson number 7. You may have already guessed it's about building a wall with a minimum number of stones. In fact we are given an array of numbers and these numbers represent the height or the level of each part of the wall starting from position 0 up to position n minus 1 where n is the size of the provided array. Here in this example, we have n equal to 9, so 9 levels overall. And we have to find the minimum number of stones that we need to build such a wall. In this example, we need at least 7 stones to achieve the required design. So our solution function should return 7 in this case. The way we are going to solve this is the following. First, we have to distinguish between two cases. First one is where we have increasing levels, meaning the consecutive heights that are provided in the array are in increasing order, in which case we can simply increment the number of needed stones, because there is no other way to go from one level to a higher level except by adding or stacking one additional stone. So if the number of stones is represented by a variable, this counter variable is going to be incremented for increasing uh, heights or increasing levels. The second case we should also consider here is where we have a decrease in consecutive levels, in which case we have to check if any of these levels was previously used in a way that it would belong to one same stone. Just like the yellow level here, we have it at this point, but we also had it before at this position. So in this case, we don't have really to increment the number of stones because we already have one common stone covering two different positions. So the number of needed stones will only be incremented in this case if the encountered level was not seen before. If we follow this logic and apply it to the provided example, the first two levels here, what we are seeing here, are two positions of the same level. So they are combined into one single stone. We don't have to add two stones because it's the same level. Then we have a new level that is lower than the previous levels. And this is the green part here. And in this case, we are going to check if this level was seen before which is not the case because we are almost at the beginning of our array and therefore we increment the number of needed stones by one. But it's not that simple. In order to check for each level if it was seen before, we have to have kept these levels in an array or a vector or somewhere in a memory. And this is what we are going to talk about next. But first, let's continue reading the example. So now we are at the lowest level we have encountered so far. And then we have a new level that is higher than the previous level. So we can simply increment our stone counter by one. Then we have another level that is higher than the previous level. So we can increment one more time the number of stones. And we are going to keep the incrementing levels into a vector that we are going to define inside of our function to be used later on to check if these levels are occurring a second time on the other side of the peak, on the right side of the peak. And if it is the case, we can avoid incrementing the number of needed stones for our wall. In fact, we are not keeping all the previous levels. We are only keeping those that were encountered since the last minimal value, the local minimum, because this is where we have increasing levels. And the reason we only keep those levels since the uh, last minimum is because when you have a valley or a minimum value like this, it would separate two parts, one at the left and one at the right, making it impossible to connect with one common stone. So any stone that is needed after this valley is going to be a new stone and this is seen in this example at this point we cannot use one common stone between this level and these levels even if we would have the same level value also here at this point we have a local minimum that is separating left side and the right side so when we encounter a level that is lower than its previous we are going to compare it with what we have kept in memory so far and we are going to check if it's the same of uh, the previous levels or if it's lower than these levels. If it is lower of any level, we are going to erase this particular one from memory. And this we can see clearly if we look to this pink level here, it's lower than its previous level. But at the same time, if we compare it with what we have kept in memory here, in our memory vector, we can notice that it's lower than these two. So we can erase those from memory because again, this one, this level is going to separate these guys 
from the right side of the array. So these are useless from now on because we cannot connect with any other level on the other side or on the right side of the array. Okay, now let's check how to write all of this in C++ and in Python. So this is our solution function. Then we have one parameter, which is the array of uh, the levels. And we are going to start by defining two variables. One is called last, where we will store temporary values of height levels. And variable C represents the number of stones in the wall. And this is the vector S, where we are going to store the increasing levels in memory, as we have discussed in the algorithm description. Then we are going to loop over all the elements of the array to start with the easiest. So we check if the current level hi is higher than the last value, which is the previous level. If it's the case, the variable last becomes equal to hi, preparing for the next iteration. And we increment the number of stones by one. And we also push back into the vector s the level hi to keep it in memory as we have already discussed. Now the more complex part is when we have decreasing levels. So if hi is lower than last, so we can define j that is equal to the size of the vector s minus one. And now we are testing if the current level hi is lower than the value of sj, meaning the last value or the highest value, the highest level of the vector s. And as long as hi is lower than the values of sj, we are going to pop back the last value of the vector sj, which is the highest level. And we are going to decrease the variable j by one. And we continue by removing all the variables or the levels that we have kept in memory in the vector s and that are higher than hi. Because remember, at this level, we are looking for the valley, if it's there. And this valley that we have described in the algorithm section is going to separate the array from the left and right side. So we can erase everything on the left side, all the levels that are higher than this particular value. And by erasing, I mean erasing from the vector s, meaning from the uh, memory that we have defined, to be used later on. So once this is finished, meaning we erased from the vector S all the levels that are higher than HI, theoretically all that is left in S is either something that is equal to HI, which doesn't require adding a new stone or incrementing the variable C, or levels that are lower than HI. So since the main target of this exercise is the count of the number of stones, we are going to test here if HI is different than the last remaining value of the uh, vector s. If it's different, meaning there is no common levels between those two, in this case, we have to increment the variable of the number of stones by one. And we are going also to push back into s the variable hi. And now the current level is going to be the last value that is kept in memory in vector s. And we update the variable last, it's equal to hi, preparing for the next iteration. And when all of this is done, we can simply return c, which is the number of stones that is required to build the uh, described wall. The solution is not the perfect and only solution. And since this example is included in stacks lesson number seven on the Codility website, we know that instead of using vectors, we can use tags because they work as a last in first out reading method, which is what we have done here, except that we have used this in the form of vectors. More specifically, we are talking about the vector s. In Python, it's very similar to the previous solution in C++. So we have our function taking one list as a parameter, and we have the same variables. We have last, which is equal to zero at first, then c equal to zero, which is the counter of the number of stones. And instead of the vector s here, we have defined a list s, which is an empty list at first. Then we are going to loop over all the elements of list h, checking the two cases where uh, the first condition where we have hi is higher than the previous uh, element, the previous level. And this is where we are treating the increasing levels that we have described in the algorithm section. Then the second case where hi, the current level, is lower than the previous level. And this is where we are going down. We have decreasing levels. So if we have increasing levels, we have to add stones. So this is why we are incrementing c, the variable of the number of stones by one. And we are also updating the value of last for the next iteration. It will be equal to hi. And we are also appending the level hi into the memory 
uh, or the list that we have defined, which is called S, since we are going to use these values later on in the program. Then when HI is lower than the previous element, meaning we have decreasing levels, we are going to compare this level with the last element that is contained in our list S, which is the highest level contained in S. If it's lower than S, then in this case, we are going to uh, erase this last element. This is why we used S.pop here. And this is put in a while iteration loop because we have to remove all the levels in S that are higher than HI. Then when this is done, we are going to compare if the level HI is different than the remaining highest level in S that wasn't erased. So either it's equal or it's lower than HI in this case because we have already erased all the greater elements here. And if these two are different, it means we have a new level in the array in which case we need a new stone, so we increment the variable c by one, and we append this new level into our vector s or our list s of uh, levels. Then we can update the uh, value of the last variable, meaning the last level that we have read, it's equal to hi at this stage, and we continue iterating until we have reached the end of uh, the array, and at the end we can return c, which is the number of stones needed for the stone wall. Okay, so that's all I had to tell you about the solution, and uh, honestly, although the Codility website are putting this as a painless level exercise, I honestly found it more challenging than the other examples in the same lesson, like the brackets, fish, or nesting examples. However, this shouldn't prevent us from paying this effort to progress. I hope you guys liked it, and remember to always enjoy the learning process. Stay tuned for more, and see you next time.